The following program was made possible by the friends and partners of FEMC Taft Media Ministry. Coming up on the FEMC Taft Media Ministry Worship Service. In the story of David and Goliath, we see that David was a young man of obedience. God calls us to be obedient servants, not tyrannical rebels. There are times when obedience is not possible. We agree with that, right? There is time. One of those times when Daniel and Elias did. The king says, you will not pray to your Lord God. He said, you will not pray to your God. And Daniel said, what? I'm going to pray to my God. Uh, these people says you will not read and bring Bibles into the Soviet Union or to these other places and people are doing it. So there's times to be rebellious. There's times not to be obedient. Extremely 
obedient even if it was unfavorable. In Samuel 17:20, it says, When David's father asked him to do a job, David obeyed. 17, 26 and 20 says, when David was prompted by the his spirit to take a stand for the Lord, he did it without hesitation. And if the spirit will talk to you today, you'll get what I'm trying to throw down. You'll get the 411, as the kids say, that I'm trying to get across to you. One is we have to be obedient. We have to open our ears and we have to hear the Holy Spirit talking to us and then to do what? We need to hear, listen, and without hesitation say, yes, Lord. It could be as little as just going to a meeting. It could be as little as hearing God's words and knowing that you need to, this, this person needs a door and then all of a sudden God shows you a door on the side of the road. I'm using actual ex examples of what's happened in this church. God can tell you to stop in your tracks and turn around and go back and pray for somebody. We have to be obedient without hesitation. God has placed authorities over us, each one of us, that we should be willing to obey in every situation. We agree with that. Being in the military, being in some of the jobs I've had, when you have, especially in the military, if they tell you to jump, you say yes or how high. When God's telling us to do something, we need to pretend that we're in the military. And when God says, are you, I need you to do this, instead of going, you guys know my story. Well, yeah, but I really want to go do this. And he calls you again and he's like, oh, I really want to go do this. Without hesitation, we need to do. Because I promise you, if I would have done what I'm doing now at 17, can you imagine how much better I would be? Now don't shake your head just because that's going to make me feel bad. <laughs> but can you understand that I've got a year and a half under my belt to where if I would have started at 17, 18 years old and gone through my studies and done everything, can you imagine the sermons that I could do? Could you imagine the things that I could do? Can you imagine the knowledge that I would have? Amen. And that's true. And I know that. But I'm going to flip that back on you guys. If you jump on it, if you start going, if you start doing what God is asking you to do, can you imagine where you would be today? And I'm not saying that you have it. You have to look in your own heart. But can you imagine if you would have done, and I, I promise you, I'm not judging you, but I can promise you there are certain things inside your life that you did not con conform and do what God asked you to do. Can you imagine what could have transpired if you would have done that? In the story of David and Goliath, we see that David was a young man of obedience. God calls us to be obedient servants, not tyrannical rebels. There are times when obedience is not possible. We agree with that, right? There is times. One of those times when Daniel and the lion's den. The king says, you will not pray to your Lord God. He thought I was going to throw a twist on him, didn't I? He said, you will not pray to your God. And Daniel said, what? I'm going to pray to my God. How about these people that says, you will not read and bring Bibles into the Soviet Union or to these other places. And people are doing that. So there's times to be rebellious. There's times not to be obedient to the world. I really need you to pick up what I'm throwing there. We can do whatever we want to. We have to follow man's law. It says we've got to do that. We've got to do that. We have to be obedient. If I 
promise you there's going to be times when you have to stand up and fight the tyrannical leaders to follow the one true king. If I stood here as a preacher and told you, you will not read your Bibles, what would you tell me? I would hope you would tell me no. I'm not doing that. If I stood up here and told you, you cannot pray to God, I would certainly hope that you would say, it, we, no, 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 my God. And I've talked several times this week to several different people about taking your focus off of the problems that you're having and put them on God. Take that obedience. Follow Him no matter how sad, no how sad, no how hard, no matter what it is. If you put Him first, if you focus on Him and you follow Him, I'm not going to tell you that you're not going to have problems, but I'm going to tell you your outcome is going to be divine. Amen? Amen. It is time that you take a stand for something. David, when he went up there and, and he was facing Goliath, can you imagine this puny little kid looking down there and with the audacity to say, I can do this. Was it audacity or was it the power of Jesus Christ? Was it the faith in the God that he knew that he protected lions and tigers and bears and stuff to keep his sheep safe from those evil things? God taught him a thing to understand and have that faith in him and to be obedient to him. When David arrived at the camp, he was shocked to hear the words of Goliath. He immediately thought that something should be done to stop that blaspheming giant. 1 Samuel 17, 26. It was almost seems like David did not notice everybody else on the hillside. His first reaction was that there was a cause for which to fight. A cause for which to take a stand for your wife. There's a cause to take a stand for the rules. There's a cause to take a stand for your boyfriend. Are those all valid things to take a stand for? Yes, to a certain degree. But it's time that we not take a stand for these worldly things. We can if they're right, if they're just, if they're, if they're holy. But it is time that we take a stand for our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only do we take a stand, but we start moving forward for the abilities that he's giving us. 1 Samuel 17, 26 says, And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed the Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from his Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Folks, we have this society today, and it's not been just this society. We've had conversations about that. Look what they're doing to our world. Look what they're doing to our religious sex. Sex. That did not come out right, did it? Sex. Yeah, let's leave it at that. Look what they're doing to our religious organizations. Look what they're doing to our morals and our ethics. And is it not time that we stand up and take a stand for our God? Is it not time that we start seeing more than three and four hundred people in church? Is it not our time to stand up and start fighting and going calling and drawing more, not to build up our numbers, to build up the kingdom? It is our time to be soldiers for our God. We also have to believe and trust in God. David believed that God would gain the victory in Samuel 17, 26. And also in 32 and 37, David wanted to be a part of God's plan. He trusted that God could and would use him for anything. Do you have that faith? Do you have that trust? There were times in my life I doubted it. There's not a doubt in my mind anymore. I know where I'm supposed to be. 
I know what I'm supposed to be doing, and I completely, 100% trust God. Now, I'm also human, and there's times that I waver and go, why am I having to go through this? And then I catch what my dad used to tell me. It's not why. Don't ask question why. What can I gain from this? What can I learn from this? What can I do better for you? Today we will hear so many people say that they can't do this or that for the Lord because the Lord has not called them in particular service. But what was David called to do? David was called, he was a shepherd. He carried his little stick and he went around protecting the sheep, right? That's what he was called to do by man. But what did God call him to do? What did God give him the power and strength to do to take on this massive giant? What did you go through today and this week? Find out what your massive giant is. David didn't wait to be called. David volunteered to put his life on the line for God's honor. We've had several conversations in this church where I've asked for volunteers to do something. And I've been told that doesn't work. You need to go ask them to do something. You specifically have to go to them and ask them. Why should I have to specifically go to and ask when God's calling you, not me? When you hear a need, when you hear something that you need, you should be running to that to jump in. It may not be your thing, it may be somebody else's, but you know what? We are all called to this ministry. We are all called to go outside these church walls. We are all called to do something for our God. We are all called to trust our God. I absolutely believe that God's call, call, God calls people into his service, but I also think that many people hide behind the phrase, God has not called me to do that. I'm not sure who first said it, but I have heard the sentiments that ask, has God called you to sit at home and not take the gospel to the dying world? Folks, that's ever more prevalent today after this last two weeks in at least three of our lives. Is it not our job to touch somebody and tell them before they take their last breath that their Savior and their eternity rides on knowing God? Isn't that what we're called to do? Isn't that what all these words in this Bible tell us to do? That is the purpose of this Bible is to repeat that and do that. We need to look at our past victories. David was able to trust the Lord because the Lord had led him in many ways in the past. In Samuel 17, 34 through 7. David also knew that he could fight Goliath even though he had never faced a giant in the past. David used past victories of fighting the bears and the wolves and these animals to protect him, protect his sheep. He says, you may be facing some great obstacles in your life today, but what have you seen God accomplish in the past? Can you go through your existence, can you go through your life and figure and see and find something that God's conquered in your life? I can I know my heartaches. I know my surgeries. I know some of the things where they told me that I would never live outside of an iron lung. There's another living example right there of God's miracles. There's another living example right there of God's miracles. There's another one there. If you know their stories, if you get to know them, you know the struggles and the heartaches that they've gone through. I'm a living example just because I'm here. You guys each are living examples of God's victories. Do not think he is able to continue the work in greater ways in the future. Allow those past victories to encourage you. Maybe gaining new ground in the spiritual life is not what you need right now. But what you need to do is get back to where you want from a relationship with God. Some, some of us may be to the point where, you know, we, we don't have... The, 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 the strength and the ability of an adult in our, in our relationship with 
God. Maybe we're just coming into this that we're just we're still newfound babies growing into the spiritual walk with God. That's fine. And you could be that at 90 or 70 or 15 or 6. Doesn't matter. As long as you're in that spiritual walk. I talked to you guys about the three stages of grace before. That grace is something that can grow with you and fluctuate you with you as you go, as you get saved, as you are you're sanctified, and, and, and it grows with you as you as you live out your life. Not everybody here is going to be on the same path, but you need to be on that path. Get back there by being inspired by God's faithfulness to you in the past. You, you need to boldly step forward into new victories that God wants to give you. And then the last thing that I'm going to bring up, I need you to focus on. I've had somebody sit here and say, I can't sing. I don't know who's telling you all that. And then he made the mistake of singing in front of the mic last week. <laughs> I have people that say, oh, I... I can't really do much. But she's good with computers. Well, you know, I've done this for a really, really long time. I just, you know, I just don't, I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm retired. I don't want to do this no more. What if God walked in that door right now? Jesus, God said Jesus back to the door right now. And you would know because I would probably stand here going, what if? And he walked up to you and he said, I understand you're old and tired, but will you do this for me? Are you going to turn him down? I'm not Jesus. But he's right here. Does it have to be him walking in in person to get you to do something? A friend of mine once told me, he said, you know, Scott, he said Jesus could walk through that back door right there. And they would find fault with him no matter what. Anybody believe that? I believe that. That's our society. That's our people today. He would walk in with sandals and his robe and everybody would go, That's, you don't need to dress like that in this church. And I'm not just saying this church. I'm saying, folks, it's all over. They would find fault with that. But he has called you to, and given each and every one of you a gift or gifts. You need to surrender your talents and your gifts and your devotion to Jesus Christ our Lord. It is amazing to me to see people with wonderful talents and abilities sit back and not get involved with the Lord. Me. The other thing it does is it shocks me and hurts me because how stupid I was years ago. When I knew better, I was raised that way. I was raised sleeping on that front pew <coughs> with my mom going, Bill, don't do that. And she'd wake me up and I'd be sleeping on that. That's where I was raised. But that's what I tell you. When I tell you guys stuff, it's not so much to point it at you as it is to point it to me. Because I used to come every Sunday morning and I used to sit in these pews and think, Woohoo, I'm saved, I can go to heaven. Is that how it works? This is really poignant this morning. I hope I don't upset it, but if I do, then you need to talk to God because maybe it's God convicting you of something. But we need to give our talents and our life and our love to God. They will even say things like, I could sing like Mr. B or speak like the pastor, then I would do something for the Lord. Have you ever heard that one? Well, if I could, if I could sing like, like Chelsea or Amanda or Karen, I would do it for the Lord. If I could do this, well, then I would do it for the Lord. Well, if I could, you know what? What is God's talent that He's giving you? Yet the same people could be used to win children to the Lord by the love and affection and the way that they 
his death in his Sunday school classes. Or even they can use computer skills to show the gospel through the internet and keep the computer church, church computer running. It takes a simple step of faith to use their skills for the Lord. What won the day, what won the day was David's ability that was on home while being an unknown shepherd boy who dedicated his life to the living, to the living, let me rephrase that, sorry. What won the day was David's ability that was honed while being an unknown shepherd boy who dedicated his life to living with stinky sheep. If you look at the disciples, if you look at these people, who did God use? Nobody's like me. I'm not cutting myself down because with God on my side, I am somebody. Amen? Well, guess what? If you're sitting there thinking today that you can't because, I can't because, I can't speak because, then you need to listen to Moses. You need to read about Moses and some Joseph and some of these other ones. If you think, well, I can't because I don't know. Well, I can't because of whatever. Well, I'm too old. I'm too this. Then, folks, you need to read the Bible. You need to start speaking to God. And you need to start listening. Because there's no age too old and there's no age too young. We all have a plan and a gift that we can use for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Find your obedience. Then take a stand. Trust God. Look at your past victories that he's done in your life. And then surrender your life and your talents to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bow with me this morning. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. And I can only speak for myself, Father. But Father, I, I, I can feel your spirit moving this morning. Touch somebody. Open up their hearts and their minds that they can feel you and see you and they get on fire. Father, because it only takes a spark for them to realize this and to be dedicated to you. To start moving a little bit more for you. To get more out there for you, Father. This crazy love. This crazy preaching, this crazy way of doing things, Father, it maybe takes some crazy ways to open up doors that we've never opened up before, Father. But Father, we give all to you. Father, and I give you my heart, my body, my mind. Here I am, send me. Here I am, use me. Father, may there be people in this church that speak that same prayer this morning, that they just lift it up and say, here I am. I am not going to follow my way no more. I am not going to go down this path no more. Father, I want to give you everything because I don't know if I'm going to see you tomorrow, but I want to give you my life. I want to give you everything I've got. I want to give you my heart, my soul, my mind, and my body to use for you. Show me the way. Father, so I ask upon you, with all the authority that you've given us, Father, speak to me or somebody else here today and start them on fire. Light them up that we can start moving this town and this church towards you. That we can start bringing people towards you. That we can build your kingdom in heaven, Father, for you. This is all about you, not us. Give us that power and that strength, Father, in your heavenly name. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you for watching the FEMC Taft Media Ministry Worship Service. For more information, call us at 361-528-2131 or visit us online at taftmethodist.com. The address is 302 McIntyre Avenue, Taft, Texas 78390. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the official Media Ministry YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. 
and God bless you. The preceding program was made possible by the friends and partners of FEMC Taft Media Ministry.